In this example, we are given a loaded foundation and we are asked to do two things. Part A says to compute the applied stress at the clay's midpoint using the two to one method without Simpson's rule. So we're just gonna use the regular old two to one method um, and go to the midpoint of that clay layer. Part B then says compute the average applied stress in the clay layer using the two to one method with Simpson's averaging rule, okay? So let's take a look here. We have this foundation that's supporting an 800 kip load and um, I need to give you this given information, but the base of this foundation is 10 feet by 10 feet. So that's the bottom of the foundation is uh, 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, the foundation is embedded into the soil by two feet. And then below that, you've got six feet of sand. And then you encounter this four foot clay layer. So for part A, the point of interest is this midpoint of the clay layer right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our solution. Now, um, for our solution uh, for part A, I'm going to just go ahead and redraw this figure. So we've got our foundation here, 800 kips, and um, it's the foundation is two feet thick. And then below that, of course, we have um, six feet of sand. And then below that, we've got four feet of clay that we're interested in. All right, and so uh, part A says just use the two to one method um, without using Simpson's rule. So we're gonna project these lines and we're gonna project them where? Well, we're gonna project them down to the midpoint of the clay layer, okay? So down to this point. So two feet below that sand clay interface. Now here's where you gotta be careful. The projection lines, the, the two to one projection lines, where do they start? Well, they start at the base of the foundation, not at the ground surface, okay? So actually this top two feet is not really important to us. So that could be a good trick question. Your projection lines start at the base of the foundation, okay? And so um, down here at the bottom, as we've discussed before, um, this is where you are, uh, this is the, your projected area that you're interested in. So if you notice your projected area here is going to be, is going to be B plus Z squared, right? So B plus Z times uh, B plus Z, okay? And that's, uh, you know, if you look back in your notes, that's because um, if you remember this dimension right here is B, which is 10 feet. And then of course this is Z over two and Z over two because you drop down at a ratio of two to one horizontal, all right? So uh, that should be, uh, you know, familiar to you from before. And, you know, of course B is 10 feet. So we'll make a note here, B is 10 feet, all right? So what is our projected area, okay? Our projected area is 10 feet plus what? Well, what is Z? Z is this depth right here, right? Z is the depth from the base of the foundation to the point that you're interested in. It's this vertical depth. So Z would be um, six plus two, is eight feet, okay? So your projected area is 10 feet plus eight feet. So that's gonna be 18 squared. So let's uh, punch that through. So that's 324 square feet. So what does this mean? This, what we're trying to find here is the stress right here we're looking for the stress value at that depth, right? We're looking at the stress on this projected plane, on the bottom of this frustum, this three-dimensional frustum uh, or pyramid-type frustum that, that we have projected down into the ground. So 
we're ready to go now. We can say that delta sigma z is 800 kips times 324 square feet. And it is that simple. Um, we get 2.47 KSF. Okay, now that's part A. Let's look at part B now. Part B said to basically do the same thing, but use Simpson's rule for averaging. So I'm going to redraw this yet again. Here's my foundation. Here's my 800 kips. Here's my two foot thickness that I'm not very interested in, but I am interested in this six foot and then this four foot thickness. And you know, here, so I'm just redrawing everything right now. So um, with Simpson's rule, um, you still, you, you, part B said use two to one method with Simpson's rule. So what are we doing? We're still projecting a two to one slope, except this time we're projecting a two to one slope such that we can find three values. We want delta sigma top, delta sigma middle, and delta sigma bottom in the strata of interest, which for us, the strata of interest is this clay layer. So what we want is we want the stress level here, right? So this will, if I kind of superimpose a little stress distribution here, this will be delta sigma top, and then I want it in the middle. So we can call this delta sigma mid, and then we want it at the bottom. Delta sigma bottom, okay? So all we're doing is, you know, just kind of more of the same thing, all right? So um, what we need to do is get three different depth values, three different Z values. So Z1 is going to be six feet. Z2 will be eight feet. And then, of course, Z3 will be 10 feet. OK, so using Simpson's rule, uh, let's just write Simpson's rule um, you know, in general, delta sigma z average is delta sigma top plus four times delta sigma middle plus delta sigma bottom. And then we're gonna divide all that by six. So how do we get delta sigma top? Well, delta sigma top is gonna be 800 kips divided by and we look at B plus Z squared, except we use a Z value of six feet because we're interested in the stress at this level, six feet below the base of the footing. So it'll be 10 feet plus six feet squared. So that's just 16 squared, right? So we'll have 800 divided by that is 3.125 KSF. Delta sigma middle is 800 kips divided by 10 feet plus 8 feet squared. And that comes out to be um, 2.47 KSF. And then delta sigma bottom is 800 kips divided by 10 feet plus 10 feet squared. So uh, let's see, 20 squared is 400. So 800 divided by 400, of course, is just 2 KSF. Now we can calculate the average stress in the clay layer using Simpson's rule and using these three values. So let's uh, substitute these values in very carefully. 3.125 plus 4 times 3.47 plus two, all divided by six. So this ends up becoming 3.168 KSF. So what we've done here is we've used 
the two to one method in conjunction with Simpson's rule to get the uh, average stress value in that four foot clay layer. So this is this is uh, within the four foot clay layer, okay? So if you notice, if you take this value and you compare it to uh, what we got earlier in part A, it's larger, okay? It's larger than delta sigma z at the middle of the clay layer. So it would be more conservative and more correct to base any kind of calculations or design off of the higher stress level that is uh, throughout that clay layer, okay? So that's gonna conclude this example.